Each week, American History TV's American Artifacts takes viewers behind the scenes at archives, museums, and historic sites. Now, in the second of a two-part program on American Artifacts, we continue our look at the United States Exploring Expedition of 1838 to 1842. The USXX returned with over 40 tons of animal, plant, and ethnographic objects. The Smithsonian was founded in 1846, and the Exploring Expedition artifacts were the basis of the institution. Well, the three primary individuals on the expedition, from a botanical point of view, were Charles Pickering, who was actually a very accomplished uh, scientist and a very broadly based one, uh, both plants, animals, and so forth. Uh, William Brackenridge, who was the only non-American on the expedition, he was the Scot who was who was invited at the very last minute, and a fellow named William Rich, who really had very little expertise. He was primarily a Washington, D.C. native who was responsible for setting up uh, garden and flower shows on weekends. Primarily Brackenridge and Pickering, as far as those who went along, carried the weight, as well as John Torrey, who was at Columbia College in New York, and Asa Gray, who was at Harvard. Uh, those were the four that primarily published on botany. They were quite anonymous when they collected the objects. So they were collected. They collected the objects, and Tish and Ramsey Peel made the catalog. But uh, I suppose he would be my favorite because he actually uh, paid attention and uh, made lists and uh, let us know where things came from as well as he could. What I want you to look at now is there are four really very important masks that are uh, laid out here, and they come from uh, the northwest coast of America also. And although the tribal is, name is not known for sure, we think they're Haida. So here it says on the forehead I see uh, XX Wilkes. That would have been painted on there by the expedition themselves? Yes, it would. Uh -huh. Also painted on is on this mask, I think it's this one, there is actually a note as to the latitude and longitude. It's been painted over. But at one point, it had the latitude and longitude of where it was collected. This is a, uh, a jar of little stream-dwelling frogs, Rana aurora, from the west coast. It's also from Oregon, or the Oregon Territory, that were collected by the uh, U.S. Exploring Expedition. And this is a series of juveniles. And once again, these are specimens that can be used for scientific research, or we keep them and make sure that they are, they are going to be um, available for research in the future and they are being housed you know in the best possible conditions we can we can provide for them so that that after 150 years they're still in good condition and they'll hopefully be in good condition for another 150 or longer. As we assembled all the Wilkes collections it will be the first and only collection in the main herbarium that we're going to set aside as a separate collection for two reasons. One of his tremendous his historic importance, but the second reason is because we will finally have all the data, all the images, and the entire story to put online. So by segregating them, we're going to ensure the preservation of the collection. We're going to ensure the accessibility by having all of this digital data available online. And, and, in, and in this particular case, be able to tell a far more complete story of the botanical uh, exploits of the expedition. It's a very important collection because those of us who are historical anthropologists, such as I am, were very interested in uh, what, what was used, how it was made uh, in the middle of the 19th century, and also uh, into the 18th century, where the collections were made by Cook's voyages. And so we can look at them and see how things have changed, how they've changed until today, and how uh, Native peoples have incorporated designs and ideas from the West, but yet keeping their own uh, com complex of uh, doing things. This expedition was paid for by the United States government. Is it fair to say that these jars of frogs belong to the American people? These absolutely belong to the American people. These, these specimens, everything we have here, is, uh, belongs to the, 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 the federal government, and therefore they're the, the collections of the, uh, the citizens of the United States of America. Um, that does not mean that we will let anybody come in and work with these specimens. We, we still want only scholarly research being done on them. But uh, this is basically the, uh, 
the collections um, by the people and for the people.